Hey y'all, so in this video I wanted to talk you through the video lecture part of the informative speech assignment. And first, there are two basic reasons why I decided to have you do this assignment. The first one is that I thought creating the video lecture would be good practice for your informative speech video. So as you know from looking at the module, you're going to write an informative speech preparation outline and turn that in. And eventually you're going to do a speech in front of an audience of at least nine people. But in between, what I thought would be helpful to practice and prepare for that video is to create these video lectures. So um, that's one part of the reason for the assignment. And the other reason for the assignment is that it seems like it makes sense. You're taking an online course in public speaking, um, and by now, hopefully, you've seen the utility of video lectures. Much of the teaching that I've done for y'all has been through the video lectures, uh, and so I could see a world in which you may want to post your video lecture on YouTube as a resource for other people. Uh, and so, you know, as we do more and more communicating and working together online, there are an increasing number of reasons to create these kinds of video products. And so those are the reasons for the assignment. So here we are in the course, and you can scroll down <clears throat> to the informative speech assignment. And you'll notice that I've added a new module called screencasting. Uh, I think eventually this assignment is going to be called a screencasting assignment, but it, so it's talking about the video lecture assignment, but I think screencast may be a better name for it. So anyway, I've added this new module, and the video that I'm making now is going to be right here in the screencast module. Um, so the first thing I thought we should do is come down to the informative speech video lecture and take a look at that. So you can see you're going to record a video lecture for your informative speech using PowerPoint, Keynote, Prezi, or another slide deck. Um, and essentially you're going to create a video lecture similar to the lectures I've created for you. Um, the difference is you are not conveying, uh, it's not, you're not doing a how-to speech. Most of the lectures that I've recorded for you are walking you through some ideas and talking to you about how to do something. And so there are some limitations on what your slide deck is going to look like. You're allowed to have one slide for the introduction one to two slides for each main point, and one slide uh, or screen for the conclusion. Uh, and actually, let's edit this real quick. You can also have one slide or screen for the title. save that. All right. So now you're essentially going to have a presentation where you have the title screen, which would be the title of your speech, your name, uh, and then a slide for the introduction, one to two slides for each main point, and one slide for the conclusion. And as you can see, you're bringing together things you've learned in several chapters. When we switch back to the module view, you will see that um, you're going to be studying visual aids soon, and that's covered in Chapter 14. And essentially, the PowerPoint, Prezi, or Keynote is a visual aid, and so all of the tips for visual aids in Chapter 14 apply um, and so you'll want to study chapter 14 to see what it says about using visual aids. 
Also, the module that I was just showing you has a bunch of tips for creating the video lectures. We're going to look at that in a second. And in addition, I will be grading I will be grading your delivery based on the principles you learned earlier in the semester. So although I can't judge your eye contact or movements or gestures, obviously, I will be judging the qualities of your voice and some other things that we'll see in just a second. In the video, you do want to include the signpost transitions and verbal citations as it's written in the preparation outline and the video should be four to six minutes long, just like your speech is four to six minutes long. Uh, then the rest of this tells you how to submit the YouTube link. Um, but the other thing I wanted to do was walk through the rubric. And this is the place, probably the main place to go to make sure that you're doing exactly what you need to be doing for this assignment. So as you can see, I'm grading the qualities of your voice just like I would in any other speech assignment. So you need to speak at a conversational rate. Your pitch should sound natural and conversational. I need to be able to understand you. You should use pauses purposefully and minimize vocal pauses. And you should have a sense of importance and conviction and your voice and you should talk with energy. All right, so that's all stuff you learned before. Also, I'm gonna grade the quality of your video. It should play at at least 480p. It should be, not be blurry or pixelated on a high quality laptop or desktop and there are deductions if any of those things aren't met. And I should be able to hear you clearly with no distractions. I'm also going to evaluate, are you actually using your outline as a script for delivering the speech? Obviously, in this situation, I can't see what you're using for a script, so you could use your note cards. But I think in most cases, probably using your preparation outline as a starting point for a script will be extremely helpful. Uh, you want to be as precise as you can in the video lecture, so you may even create a manuscript. It's really up to you. But what I want you to do is deliver the speech as close to the ideal wording as possible, but also sound extemporaneous and interested in your topic, and also use signposts, transitions, and verbal citations. Okay, now the rest of the rubric is based on tips from your book for visual aids and some of the tips I'm going to show you next about creating screencasts. Uh, and you can see, so one tip is that the slide should be visually simple. Sometimes uh, students or people in general create PowerPoint slides that are too cluttered. They have a bunch of images, they might contain a chart and an image and some text, and for our purposes you're going to be shooting for um, your slides being really simple. Also you should use a limited amount of text. In most cases there should be little to no text on your slides. Um, and I actually would prefer probably if you used high quality images that connect to what you're talking about, that demonstrate some feature you're talking about, and also keep the interest of the audience combined with a very small amount of text. If you find yourself typing more than two or three words, if you find yourself including a bunch of bullet points, you're not going in the right direction. Also, the book suggests that you use the same one or two fonts, that they should not be decorative, they should not be all caps, and they should be easy to read. Um, you can read more about font use in the, some of the guidance I'll give you in a minute. 
you want to use colors effectively. This is discussed in your book and in the uh, other materials. One thing that's really important is that you use high quality images. If you use images that are too small or too pixelated, it's not helpful for the viewer. And so as you're searching for images, you want to make sure that they're high quality. Um, and then finally, a couple things I'll be grading based on the screencasting part of the assignment itself. Okay, so uh, one thing is your screen appearance. And as you can see here, this is a little bit more casual video. You can see all my bookmark tabs up here. Uh, but ideally for the assignment itself, since you're going to be using a PowerPoint or Keynote, um, you will have that in full screen mode and we won't be able to see your desktop. We won't be able to see browser tabs open. Uh, and if you do use Prezi, you will want to record only the Prezi and not the browser itself. Also, notice how I'm moving the mouse around. If you do a lot of that, it's distracting. So your cursor should be used purposefully. If you want us to know that we're paying attention to this criteria on the rubric, you can highlight it. Um, but typically, most of the time for a PowerPoint lecture or a Prezi or Keynote, you just want to move the cursor off the screen so that it's not distracting. Finally, I think probably ideally you'll want to go through the speech in one take without having to edit it. But if you do edit, and that's fine, you can record in pieces and edit it together. You want the edits to be smooth and not distracting. And so basically these are the criteria I'm going to be grading you on. And if you have any questions, you can ask in the Common Course questions. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to do is go back to the module I was showing you earlier. And this is a resource for creating your screencast. So let's take a look at this. So basically, first of all, I give you some resources for picking a screencast recorder. You can Google this yourself if you want to. That's probably what I would do if I was in your position. But if you want to keep it simple, you can start with these resources. One thing you should know, let's say, for example, you pick Screencast-O-Matic. The first thing you should do is test out the program to make sure it's going to work for you before you go any farther. So download Screencast-O-Matic, uh, just start a recording and see how it works to record your browser. Look through the frequently asked questions. One thing about free Screencast recording programs is they, they may limit you to only like a five minute recording. So if your speech is six minutes long, that's obviously gonna be a problem. Um, if you got a little bit of cash, you can buy a low budget or high budget. I mean, what I use, I think the uh, program I use is about a hundred bucks. Not everybody has a hundred bucks to blow on something like this, but if you could see yourself making recordings like this in the future, you might want to invest in something like Camtasia. Uh, there are a couple other ones. Camtasia is what I use. Um, a couple people have mentioned Jing, which is free, but it has a five-minute video limit. And then also, the other thing I wanted to mention is PowerPoint allows you to record you narrating over the slides. And I have not used that, but that might be an easy solution. If you have a fairly recent version of PowerPoint, you can... Uh, open it, click slideshow, and then click record slideshow, which I have circled and arrowed there, and that might be a way to go. And then once you've done that, you can save that as a video and upload it to YouTube. 
Okay, so the other thing that you need to do is think about how to make a screencast. And there are a lot of how-to guides for making a screencast. I picked two that I thought would be helpful, but you can, you know, again, you can Google it if you want. One thing to keep in mind, always do what the rubric says, even if what looks like a really good article tells you to do something else. So for example, I think one of the things on the rubric was use no more than two different fonts. So if you happen to be Googling this and you find something that says, hey, use 20 different fonts, that would be awesome. Don't do that. Do what the rubric says. Here's one more important thing. Uh, once you start Googling this, one thing you're going to find a lot of is that you need to use a high quality microphone. One of the links that I've shared with you here below, this one, if I can highlight it correctly, the Sean Hesketh link. He even shows you how to set up your own recording sound booth. Um, but anyway, you do not have to buy a microphone. The microphone in your laptop or computer should be adequate. I do not know if doing this on your phone, an iPad, or another um, pad will be good enough. Uh, and You may want to test that out. I really don't do that kind of stuff on a phone and I don't own an iPad, uh, so, but you need to be sure that when you record on your computer or whatever device you're going to use, it's loud enough and of a high enough quality for the assignment. If I can't hear you, obviously that's a problem. Okay, so real quick, let's just go ahead and take a look at these articles. This is actually a really good one. It's fairly recent. Uh, and it talks you through a little bit about the tech, the screen recording software. So it talks about how to use QuickTime Player if you have a Mac. Um, it also talks you through Camtasia and ScreenFlow, which you have to pay for. It also tries to get you to buy a high-quality microphone, which I said you don't have to do. But again, if you think you might be making more of these in the future, you might want to consider that. He shows you how to create a sound booth. But this is the section I think everybody would benefit from. He gives you a step-by-step -step process, and then he gives you some tips like hiding the desktop, using full screen mode, making sure your screen resolution is correct, um, changing the size of your cursor, and then there's some other stuff. So that one might be helpful. And then here's another one that I thought had some good, really simple tips, but it, if you can see, it's pretty clear that it's designed to sell you screener. Um, and I don't know anything about that, but I thought the tips were good. Again, it tells you to buy a microphone and a headset, but it's got some other good tips like turning off the AC and fans. So for example, if your smoke detector's batteries are dead and the smoke detector is beeping, please replace the batteries. A, it could save your life, and B, it will not drive my dogs crazy when I'm listening to your video. Also, there might be other distractions like a flickering light or your phone ringing. It gives you some other tips like having water handy, getting comfortable and some other things that you might find useful. Uh, and I think that's about it. So um, as I said, this is the first time I'm doing this assignment. So on the one hand, I don't have a ton of guidance for you. On the other hand, I am going to keep that in mind as I'm grading your assignments. I want you to try to do the best you can but keep in mind, um, you know, we're all going to kind of learn together. And I'm really looking forward to see what you come up with. Uh, as you can see, you are studying visual aids and taking the visual aid quiz by March 16th, which is a week before the lectures are due. 
Uh, so that's going to help you a little bit with the lectures. So anyway, that's it for now. If you have any questions, let me know. And like I said, I'm looking forward to seeing what y'all put together for the video lectures.